Hello and welcome everyone. Pastor Sheila here. In today's service, you will see the palm and passion stories unfold with pictures. Choosing to tell the story this way means you will hear my voice, but not see my face today. Instead, I will be watching with you and responding to comments and prayer requests as they come up, just as we would live. In this rarefied time when things that might otherwise pull us all away from perhaps worship or Good Friday services have been set aside, we have a unique opportunity to genuinely sit with Jesus. To hear our shared faith story today, and again as Reverend John shares the passion story in another way here this Friday, Good Friday at 7 p.m. In the time between today and Good Friday's service lies this invitation to really immerse ourselves, to genuinely feel the depth and breadth of what transpires between celebratory palms and the Sunday not yet come. In this Lenten season, Jesus has healed a blind man with mud and spit and so many more. He's even saved Lazarus, rising him from four days dead back to earthly life. He's done these things to meet human need, teaching the spirit of the law of God, even on the Sabbath. When people got hungry, Jesus fed them with food and compassion. When a storm threatened to overtake his disciples, Jesus calmed the waters and protected them and made them feel safe. In all these things, he embodied the spirit of God's law, love of God, love of self, love for one another, a focus that would prove too much for most in the day. These elements of our Christian story are played out in today's scriptures from Matthew. As we listen to Matthew's words, let them be personal. Notice what you see and hear this time, what moves or challenges or perhaps even convicts you. Witness, watch, wonder, and follow. We come to prepare for this holiest of weeks. We will journey through praise with joy on our lips we will travel through betrayal and death, cradling hope deep in our hearts. Jesus leads us through this week and we will follow, for he is the life we long for. He is the word who sustains us. We wave palm branches in anticipation and lay our love before him to cushion his walk. Setting aside all power, glory, and might, Jesus comes modeling humility and obedience for all of us. O oh Lord, who on this day entered the rebellious city that later rejected you, we confess that our wills are as rebellious as Jerusalem's. Have mercy on us. We lay at your feet all that we have and all that we are, trusting you to forgive the actions that separate us from you to heal what is broken, to welcome our praises and to receive us as your own. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who brings us the kingdom of God. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophets, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble, mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. 
A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and followed him shouted, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he had entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Imagine being there, the rustle of branches and clothes being laid down, how they tamped down the dust rising from the road. Feel the press of people making way all around at Jesus. The smell of animals and fresh cut branches intermingling in the closeness as those present shout their hosannas before him. We too can shout or sing out or simply wave our homemade palms together as the music of hosanna, loud hosanna, blows over us. <laughs> Jesus has entered the city of Jerusalem, far from northern Galilee, where he did most of his ministry. Jerusalem is the center of Jewish life. The Jews chafed under the yoke of Roman rule. The Jewish people were expected to color inside the lines, keep themselves in check, or risk political repercussions. Emotions were high as multitudes gathered for the Passover feast. Israel seethed with unrest its people yearning for a messianic deliverer who would once and for all restore to Israel the throne of David and establish God's kingdom in the land. All these things set the stage for the passion story. There is courage embodied by the steady, sure course of Jesus' mission, and there is fear as the disciples desert over the coming week. We enter the story as the desertions begin. One of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priests and said, what will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. I wonder where and how we see hostility and betrayal in our world today. Is there anything that would be worth it to you or I to betray a friend? What small betrayals have we been ensnared by and how might we make amends for them? God, prevent us from allowing our bitterness or disappointment to lead us to harm others, whether in thought or deed. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed, and began to say to him one after the other, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. Judas, who had betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, 
you have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, poured out for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Imagine for a moment being there, the yeasty aroma of fresh baked bread in the air, the tang of juice as they drink, the rustling of their robes around the table and sounds of dishes and cups moving, scraping around on the table. And then hearing Jesus say those oh so familiar words that bind us together. Together, we too enter the story as we share in this meal. The time to give thanks and break bread is upon us. The time to give thanks and drink of the cup is imminent. We humbly ask God's blessing on the elements held by each of us now, that we might feel as one in this moment with you, God, and with Christ, and with one another. Take and eat. Take and drink. Taste and see. God, thank you for the gift of your own body and blood. Let that gift strengthen us in the knowledge that you love us more than anything. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. He said to the disciples, stay here while I go and pray over there. When he took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, he began to feel sad and anxious. Then he said to them, I'm very sad. It's, it's as if I'm dying. Stay here and keep alert with me. Then he went a short distance farther and fell on his face and prayed, My father, if it's possible, take this cup of suffering away from me. However, not what I want, but what you want. He came back to the disciples and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, couldn't you stay alert for one hour with me? Stay alert and pray so that you won't give in to temptation. The spirit is eager, but the flesh is weak. A second time he went away and prayed, my father, if it's not possible that this cup can be taken away unless I drink it, then let it be what you want. Again he came and found them sleeping, their eyes heavy with sleep. But he left them and again went and prayed the same words for the third time. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Will you sleep and rest all night? Look, the time has come for the Son of Man to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let's go. It can be challenging to remain present with Christ, to hold, to stay awake to him, to God's longing for us, 
amidst the demands of resurrection and being born anew. Challenging to allow Christ into the hollows of the grave spaces within us, the places that are dead or dying. God, protect and preserve us in this world that we might keep faith with the promises and responsibilities we have undertaken. And when we feel alone, remind us that you understand and are with us. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Judas had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Jesus neither fights nor runs. His life will be torn from him in the worst form his enemies can conceive of. But even more painful than the nails, the lash, and the thorns will be this path of betrayal he must travel to cross. In Gethsemane, Jesus asked his apostles to stay and watch with him while he prayed. They responded by snoring through his agony of anticipation. Theirs is a betrayal of indifference followed by a betrayal of fear in their flight from Jesus when he is arrested. Judas, whose name has become synonymous with betrayal, adds a flourish to his treachery by betraying Jesus with a kiss. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest in whose house the scribes and elders had gathered. Peter was following at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, you have said so, but I tell you from now on you will see the Son of Man seated, seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant woman came by and said to him, You were also with Jesus the Galilean. But Peter denied it in front of all of them, saying, I don't know what you're talking about. When he went over to the gate, another woman saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. With a solemn pledge, he denied it again, saying, I don't know the man. A short time later, those standing there came and said to Peter, You must be one of them. The way you talk gives you away. Then he cursed and swore, I don't know the man. At that very moment, the rooster crowed. Peter remembered Jesus' words, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. 
and Peter went out and cried uncontrollably. Three times Peter denies, betrays Christ. But in his despair, Peter reaches out for forgiveness, and God hears him. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, Judas departed and went and hanged himself. But the chief priests taking the pieces of silver said, it's not lawful to put them in the treasury since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. Judas betrayed Jesus first for profit and later with a kiss. Unlike Peter, he did not ask forgiveness. But took his life on a homemade gallows. Jesus was brought before the governor. The governor said, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, That's what you say. But he didn't answer when the chief priests and elders accused him. Then the governor, Pilate, said, Don't you hear the testimony they bring against you? But Jesus did not answer, not even a single word. So the governor was greatly amazed. It was customary during the festival for the governor to release to the crowd one prisoner, whomever they might choose. At that time, there was a well-known prisoner named Jesus Barabbas. When the crowd had come together, Pilate asked them, Whom would you like me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Christ? He knew that the leaders of the people had handed him over because of jealousy. While he was serving as judge, his wife sent this message to him, Leave that righteous man alone. I've suffered much today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and kill Jesus. The governor said, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Barabbas, they replied. Pilate said, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Christ? They all said, Crucify him. But he said, Why? What, what wrong has he done? The crowd shouted even louder, Crucify him! Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere and that a riot was starting. So he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I'm innocent of this man's blood, he said. It's your problem. All the people replied, let his blood be on us and on our children. And then Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus whipped, then handed him over to be crucified. A mere seven days prior, the crowds had greeted Jesus with cries of Hosanna. Now their cry is, crucify him. Caught up in the moment, between the unlikely king they cannot see and what they have always known. Use us, God, as instruments of peace in a world too often broken by violence and a thirst for power. The governor's soldiers took Jesus into the governor's house and they gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a red military coat on him. They twisted together a crown of thorns and put that on his head. They put a stick in his right hand and they bowed down in front of him and mocked him, saying, Hail, 
king of the Jews. After they spit on him, they took the stick and struck his head again and again. When they finished mocking him, they stripped him of the military coat and put his own clothes back on him, then led him away to crucify him. We talk about the death of Jesus as something far above what anyone else ever suffered. But this horrible way to die, this crucifixion process was frighteningly common in the Roman Empire. With mass executions by Rome and Judea, including some 800 at one time. Crucifixion as a form of execution didn't end until some 300 years after Jesus. In thinking about this, there's this realization that what Jesus experienced was a very common form of undignified death. And that's the point. As Jesus takes our betrayals, our sins, to the cross, his cross, From noon until three in the afternoon, the whole earth was dark. At about three, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Lamb of God, you cry out in agony, and the silent stars howl in grief. After hearing him, some there said, he's calling Elijah. One of them ran over, took a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a pole, offering it to Jesus to drink. But the rest standing there said, let's see if Elijah will come and save him. Again, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. Then he died. Lamb of God, you breathe your last and the spirit moves over the void in our hearts. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were also opened and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised. After Jesus' resurrection, they came out of their graves and went into the holy city where they appeared to many people. When the centurion and those who were with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and what had just happened, they were filled with awe and said, This certainly was God's Son. Jesus entered into our human condition, the human suffering that goes on every day, and joined us right in the thick of it. In his suffering, he has been in our place. His suffering was that of a parent who sits awake night after night at the bedside of a sick child, or who wonders when the wayward child will return. His suffering is that of the person who is at the end of their rope with depression or who can no longer stand the pain of grief over losing a loved one. His suffering is the intensity and isolation of this extraordinary time we are now living in. Jesus knows. That evening, a man named Joseph came. He was a rich man from Arimathea who had become a disciple of Jesus. He came to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate gave him permission to take it. Joseph took the body wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had carved out of the rock. After he rolled a large stone at the door of the tomb, he went away. Lamb of God, you are placed in a cold tomb, and creation trembles in the deep 
even as we pray. Lord God, on the cross, you suffered the very depths of our human life, even to the point of death. When we see the cross, let us remember that you became one of us and endured all elements of life to show us your great love and to give us hope. Loving God, in the coming days, we hope to share with your son his journey into passion and death through to resurrection. May we accept the grace he poured out upon us. May we forgive with his love and in his reconciling spirit. May his love transform the mean, broken places of our hearts. May his healing spirit transform our, ourselves in such a way that we may live from the life he poured out. May his faithfulness to you make us faithful in our relationships. We ask this in his name and lift these words of prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We sometimes think we have nothing to offer to others, but when we begin to think like Jesus, we can see the blessings that we have and the opportunities we may be given to be God's grace, hope, and love in the lives of those around us. If you are able to support our ministry at this time, we are grateful. If you are with us today but attend another church, please support your local church. Wherever and however we give, others will surely be blessed by all our gifts. As we listen to the offertory, I invite you to lift up Barbara, Kyle's dad, Morgan, and the joys and concerns of your own hearts silently to God in prayer. Jesus says, come, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. His words invite us to stand by him, to stand with him, to stay at his side as he is humiliated, beaten, mocked, and killed. To embrace this his gift of passion so fiercely that we will stay with him and live into this story of love so great that it overcomes all else. And if we stumble, to believe. 
Let us stand by Jesus through this week and come together again with Reverend John this Friday, Good Friday, at 7 p.m. here on Facebook. And in between, Lord, have mercy on us and grant us thy peace. Thank you.